Today is Han Solo's birthday. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is July 13th, 2023. It is the 194th day of the year. There are 171 days left in 2023. It's the 28th Thursday in the 28th week and the 23rd day of summer. You got 72 days left until fall. Today is National Geekness Day. From Dungeons and Dragons to Aquaman, if you're into any sort of fandom, not afraid to show it, today is your day. Embrace your geekness on July 13th. Today is a good day to dust off that 20-sided dice, have a lightsaber fight with someone, play a video game, read a comic book, all of it is considered geekness. All right, let's see what else July 13th has given us. 1787, the Congress of the Confederation enacts the Northwest Ordinance, establishing governing rules for the Northwest Territory. It also established a procedure for the admission of the new states and limits the expansion of slavery. 1863, the New York Draft Riots. In New York City, opponents of the conscriptions should begin three days of rioting, which will be later regarded as the worst in the United States history at the time. Basically, they had a draft, but if you had money, you could buy your way out of the draft. This meant if you didn't have money, you were heading to the Civil War. Back in those days, they needed bodies. They didn't matter if you were good at being a soldier or what. At least these days, they could take a look at someone and go, yeah, he's not a soldier, or this guy should never see combat, that type of thing. 1956, the Dartmouth Workshop is the first conference on artificial intelligence. This is way back before computers were even really computers, at least what we call a computer today. So they were concerned about artificial intelligence and it really didn't get mainstream till almost 70 years later. 1973, the Watergate scandal. Alexander Butterfield reveals the existence of a secret Oval Office taping system to investigators for the Senate Watergate Committee. Then magically, a whole bunch of the tapes were missing. 1977, New York City. Admits a period of financial and social turmoil, New York City experiences an electrical blackout lasting nearly 24 hours, leading to widespread fires and looting. <laughs> So this was a really dark time, not, you know, no pun intended about the blackout, but this was a really bad time in New York City. It's a major city, so it's always going to have some problems, but this was like the peak of the bad times in New York City right around 1977, really about the early 70s to about the early 80s. This is kind of where the idea for the Warriors came out and like Escape from New York normally movies follow things that are happening someplace or at least they spark the idea the theme for a movie or a book or something like that well new york city was in such bad shape back then the subways were dangerous the just you know you, nobody wanted to go to harlem this was the worst time now I'm not saying there ain't some dangerous neighborhoods in New York City right now. There are. The only neighborhoods that weren't affected by this major blackout were in Southern Queens and neighborhoods of the Rockaways, which was part of Long Island Lighting Company, as well as the Pratt Institute campus and Brooklyn. You also had a few of the older apartment buildings that had their own power generators. The rest of the city went dark and, you know, you're talking heat wave, middle of summer, no fans, no air conditioning. It was a rough 24 hours. It also started with a lightning strike on a substation on the Hudson River. Now at the time, the city was suffering a severe financial crisis and residents were terrified because this was during the Son of Sam murders. Looting and vandalism were widespread. Possibly the hardest hit was Crown Heights, where 75 stores on a five block stretch were looted or damaged. Arson was also rampant with at least 25 fires still burning the next morning. 134 stores were looted. 45 of them were set on fire. This is my favorite. Thieves stole 50 new Pontiacs from a Bronx car dealership. In total, oddly enough, nobody died, but 550 police officers were injured and 4,500 looters were arrested. There was a baseball game going on at Shea Stadium and it went black at the bottom of the sixth inning. The best thing to come out of it, David Bowie wrote a song in 1977 called Blackout. 1985, the Live Aid Benefit Concert takes place in London and Philadelphia, as well as other venues like Moscow and Sydney, Australia. Live Aid was amazing. Now listen to the bands that did this show. I won't tell you all of them, but in London, the Style Council, who were huge at the time, the Boomtown Rats, Adam Ant, Ultravox, Spandu Ballet, Elvis Costello, Sade, Sting, Phil Collins, Howard Jones, Brian Ferry, Paul Young, U2, Dire Straits Queen, David Bowie, The Who, Elton John, Freddie Mercury, Paul McCartney, and Band-Aid. Those Do You Know What Christmas people went on. In Philadelphia, Joan Baez was on, The Four Tops, Billy Ocean, Black Sabbath, Run DMC, Rick Springfield, Ario Speedwagon, Crosby, Steels, and Nash, Brian 
Brian Adams, the Beach Boys went on, George Thorgood and the Destroyers, Simple Minds, Pretenders, Santana, Madonna, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Kenny Loggins, The Cars, Neil Young, Eric Clapton, Flynn's and Led Zeppelin. This also led to other things like Farm Aid, Live 8, Here and Aid, Self Aid, Support Aid. They had all kinds of these different shows. Born on July 13th, 1942, Harrison Ford. Everyone knows Harrison Ford. Iconic actor whose memorable characters include Han Solo from the original Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and Blade Runner. First time I ever saw him was American Graffiti. Played Bob Falfa, the guy that crashes his 55 Bel Air at the end of the movie, the big race at the end. I may have told this story before on this channel, but one of my favorite stories of Hollywood is Vin Diesel meets Harrison Ford at some event or something like that. And he goes, he was a young actor at the time. He's all, what's the secret of your success here? He said, this is how I got successful. When he first moved to Hollywood, he was living with five other actors. They're from all different parts of the country. After about three months, one guy went back. After about a year, another guy went back. Two years later, another guy went back. Four years later, another guy went back. And then it was just him. That's all he told him. Sadly, his uh, new Indiana Jones, his final one, I heard didn't do really well in the box office. I feel like I need to go watch it. I love that series when I was younger. I've even watched them in recent years on Netflix or whatever. I feel like I need to go watch it. Kind of be a little nostalgia thing. Died on July 13th, 2006, Red Buttons, actor and comedian who starred in his own TV show from 1952 to 1955. He won an Academy Award and a Golden Globe during his career. He worked as a bellhop for a burlesque show before he became famous. Red Buttons died from complications from cardiovascular disease on July 13th, 2006 at the age of 87 at his home in Century City, California. He had been ill for some time and was with his family members when he died. His ashes were given to his family after cremation. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.